Oh no, you just caught me after my deep work block where I've just had no caffeine for the first 90 minutes of my day. Uh, woke up at five, uh, did a cold bath, uh, meditated for seven hours. Um, it's such, uh, no, sorry, six hours. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, three things you need to know. Three things as a gym intermediate you need to know about now getting Christmas to keep your 2023 gains. Spoiler alert, gym intermediate just means you've been in the gym for over a year. It's not anything special. It's just to separate you from, you know, the new year, new meat games that are gonna come into January. But uh, strap yourselves in, like, subscribe, because I know people are watching this and I know that you're not subscribing and I know where you live, but I'm not Liam Neeson, so I'm not gonna find you and I'm not gonna kill you. I need to get some better fucking lighting, man, but YouTube doesn't pay any money, so pay me some money. I might just do this twice, but uh, the first thing you need to know about Christmas, I think, is that it's only three fucking days. And like, to be honest, what? Christmas Eve's a Saturday, a Sunday. Christmas Day's a Monday, and Box Day's a Tuesday. It's like, it literally is only three days. I think that if you're looking at Christmas as like a break, you, like, you, you are not serious about your physique if that's how you're thinking. Like, I'm, I'll be fucking honest with you, me, and all my clients who have come, they haven't said this to me, uh, sorry, I haven't put this on and they've come to me, we're only taking them three days off. A few have got a bit of family events in between, but as for training, which is gonna be a separate video, but training doesn't change, but I think that if you're someone who is looking to take time off, then your plan isn't a good plan because you shouldn't need to take time away from it. But I would also say that if you're taking the time over Christmas as an opportunity to just go completely off the rails, like you've got bigger fish to fry, in my opinion, like something just hasn't really gone right. Like why would you wanna, and look, just being completely honest with you, even if you did go overboard over Christmas, the damage you could do over a week isn't that bad, but it's more the mindset, isn't it? Like if you're at every opportunity, you're when you have an off, when you can be off work or have a little bit of a break from usual routine, if you use that as a reason to do less on your training nutrition, you just don't give a fuck about your physique more than you think you should, uh, than you think you do. I think that given more time, you should actually do more. You, you should be able to eat better food. You should be able to prep in advance. You should be able to take longer in the gym. You should be able to train harder with the extra food you've got. Like that's how I look at it. I just can be completely honest with you. Like you can call me obsessed, you can call me whatever you fucking want, like it doesn't bother me, but that's how I'd be approaching it. Don't get me wrong, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, I'm obviously gonna be eating anything that I want, everything that I want, but I'm not bothered because I know that come the 27th, I'm straight back on it, mate. I'm straight back on it because reality check, this fitness stuff, I know I'm 27, so I might change my mind, this fitness stuff is, it, it, it's not separate from your life. Like, I don't understand why people think it's like a, like a, a tale of two cells. Like, it's not like, oh, your fitness you, and then your you you, your life you. It's like, no, it, it's all one. Like, it's all, it, if you do see yourself as your fitness is like a separate entity to your life, you're always gonna fucking struggle. At every, like, you're only one person, you're only one body. You can't be like, oh, this bit of me's gym and this bit of me's just fucking eating shit whenever I want. So it doesn't work like that. And the people who make the best results, who get in the best shape and feel the most confidence and fucking look good, they're the ones who don't think like that. They don't think like, oh, am I the fitness or not today? It's like, they, they, that's not the thought process. It's just a part of life. That's what I'm trying to get to you. But uh, I'm gonna make the jam bagel because I'm fucking starving and it's pre-workout and I might take you to the gym today. But I thought, I watch YouTube channels, right? And what I found is, you can comment and let me know this, but I found that when they, when I'm like, I, I watched a YouTube video, video about a full day of eating, and like, it was like an 18 minute video, and only about three minutes of it was him actually eating, the rest was him training. And I was just like, well, fuck that, I don't wanna watch any of that, and I just watched that three minutes, so I'm not gonna take you to the gym with me. That, that's your fault. Standing up for no reason then. <sighs> Can't be all sitting down. Um, to go over training then, like training over Christmas, like, like I said, that training never changes. The only time that you change your training is when you've followed a training program for 12 weeks and you've logged your weights every week and you can see that like your, your logs, your volume or whatever, like to be fair, I don't, I don't really expect people, I don't expect you to be doing this on your own. Like I didn't do it, I logged booked, 
and I'd look to get better, but I wouldn't be plotting my fucking volume graphs and that. I do it with my clients because, you know, they pay for the service. But when you're, you're only trained your program when your lift starts stalling and then when you've deloaded and you've gone back and like you just, you sort of not, not making progress, then you'd be like, right, okay, I need a bit of a change in training. And like, you'd be surprised at how little you actually do change, but like you wouldn't, you wouldn't go from like, oh, I've been five to four days. You wouldn't, you, you might not go from like an upper lower to a push for legs. You can do if you want, but you, you wouldn't have to. Um, you probably just change your sets, reps and exercise selection really. But that's the only time you ever change your training. Like to keep you fresh, like you can look ahead to just have January as a new training block. Like I could probably, I probably would do that. I'll be having a new training block in January, just a new program. And like how you can sort of go through all that. If you send me a message, if you email me, I can send you over my training assessment template for you to fill out and, and go from there. But and it's more so you, tra you train your principles. Like you're not gonna take it easier because you're gonna train harder because you got more food. You're not gonna take get days off. You're not gonna miss exercises like that for whatever reason i don't know why you would but you'd be surprised at how little your training does actually have to change it, it's not a lot at all you just need to make sure that you're making progress and when you're not making progress that's when you change the the sticking point is that you probably don't measure your progress and that that's the issue like you, you go off feeling like there have been times in the training block when i'm maybe in like say a 12-week training block i might be on like week three and I'm not particularly feeling great and like it'd be very easy for me to be like yeah do you know what I'm going to change things up and it's like but why though and then I'll go and look at my logs I'll go and do the session regardless of how I feel and I actually make progress and then by like week four five six I'm, I'm fine again so when you're not logging you run that risk of when you do have a bad week or when you don't feel great you just change things for the sake of changing things and then the best way I can describe that is like if you were driving to Manchester and you were just, you know, one straight, that's a mad humor me. I know it's not one fucking straight road, but let's say it's one straight road to Manchester, right? But let's say you, you know, you stopped the services three times. Let's say you got lost on the fucking diversions on the 56 and ended up in fucking Warrington, like <clears throat> on the diversion point, like, yeah, sorry, on, yeah, on the stopping point, it's like, yeah, if you like, let's say you had a week off, let's say you have like two weeks on and one week off from gym, you're not really consistent or you're not consistently serious. If you were driving to Manchester, it takes you an hour. If you stop at the services for 20 minutes, okay, it's gonna take you an hour and 20. If you stop twice for 20 minutes, it's gonna take you an hour and 40. If you stop three times for 20 minutes, it's gonna take you two hours, so you've doubled your journey. It's the same with trading. Like, if you're constantly just stopping, just having a week off, or just like, let's say you have three weeks of lifting hard, then you have one week of not lifting much at all. It's like, you're just extending the, the, the period of how long it's gonna take you to get that result. And then to go to the, the sort of analogy of, if you fucking get lost in the diversions and you go here there, and everywhere and you end up in uh, in Warrington, like so the point would be if you're on this training program then all of a sudden I go, oh, actually you know I want to do deadlifts as well. Oh no, actually no, I want to do conditioning sessions. Oh no, actually I want to add bicep curls to this. It's like you were going from here to here, like you've got point now to your end goal, but now you're going like up here, now you're going down there, now you go up there. So like you, you still you're lengthening the time it's gonna take you, but by all these diversions your goals here you might end up somewhere over there and it's like you've completely gone off track of what you're supposed to be doing so that's why it's important that you log measure because you stay on that one path to that one goal and then when you do that training assessment your goal should be right i'm going to do push pull legs and i'm going to work on my fucking chest press that's that could be your goal but every time you go away from that you're not going to get there so with your training don't change fucking anything unless all your lifts are stalling but you can look towards January to start a new training block just to give you something to look forward to. I didn't I didn't just want to leave you with nothing though, but look at that, anabolic oats. Look at that, it mixes in. It's fucking well nice. There's another way to look at Christmas and like, you're going to be in one or two camps. There's one way where you think, right, it's only Christmas, I actually don't give a fuck about Christmas. I'm just going to crack on as usual. But I'd say you're a bit of a robot. Most of us are going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to go mad over Christmas, but I do want to have some fucking some enjoyment so just see christmas as like a bit of a testing ground for where your head's at if you do find yourself wanting to binge you want to eat loads of shit and you do go off the rails don't just use that excuse like oh i'm fucking broken i don't i'm never going to cut out for this fitness stuff just use that as you got work to do it's as simple as that and on the flip side like if you're someone who isn't bothered you're like yeah you know you fucking track your christmas dinner which i hope you fucking don't and be like, right, okay, so I'm, I'm being a bit too on top over Christmas. How am I going to get out of this mindset so that I can start to enjoy myself? So Christmas is just a testing ground at the end of the day. It's no big fucking deal. It's three days. You can handle three days and just use it to boomerang and slingshot yourself forward into 2024.